see who is our next speaker then. Uh, this speaker, he is, uh, he loves reading books very much. Through the books, he learns a lot of Chinese philosophy. He wants to have, uh, to, to uh, share this learning to you all. So he has actually found out a book called University Dao. And let's welcome Dai, sharing his story. Okay, hey everybody. Uh, I am a learner, a student, uh, in particular a physics student. So this uh, may seem to some of you guys like I belong to that group of people who are just uh, nerds and have very special needs for solving equations and they have uh, they actually find great excitement and satisfaction when they play around with equations and numbers. Uh, actually, that's a common belief, right? And also, that is what was in my mind when I first chose my major as a physics student. So, a Cali Yoma as I was, uh, I thought being called as a genius is very cool stuff. So, I chose major as physicist, so I think it's difficult, and people will finally think that I'm a clever guy if I actually figure things out. And after a few years of trials and error in this road of physics, uh, I found that something which was not going as what, uh, like what I expected. So when I first uh, came to this place uh, as a 14 year, uh, 16 years old, uh, I was very excited. So I think that actually actually registered all the courses that is available. And actually, I took uh, seven and eight math and physics theoretical courses each semester, and also doing projects uh, with professors like two or three at a time. Since I thought in order to be a great scientist, you have to devote all your conscious hours into science, which is math, and physics, and other stuff. You have to work in a manner of a machine. So a learning machine operating 24-7 and processing of theorems and theorems are in textbook and dogmas and lemmas in, in math problems. So as you could possibly imagine, this is doomed to fail. And actually, my research project got messed up and my GPA started dropping quickly. And I finally figured out that I began to suffer severely in depression and uh, fear and sorrow, that I had to take sleeping pills every day in order to, to get to sleep. Uh, and procrastinate endlessly, sometimes lying on my bed hours after I woke up, so just playing around with my smartphones. And to sum up, I was pretty much screwed up my life, which almost without in the committee of suicide. But unfortunately, I didn't. And otherwise, I wouldn't be sharing with you guys my story. <laughs> so instead of giving up on everything, uh, I actually started to reflect on all of those aspects in my life. Uh, I start to reply all the things that happened in the beginning of my collegiate years. And what's wrong with me? And is it just me or the whole world is going wrong? At that time, uh, I definitely searched solutions to my problems on the internet, and on, in a bookstore, and trying to avoid thinking of killing myself again. Uh, then I came across a little book covered with dust in a corner of, a book, of a, my bookshelf. Uh, it's called uh, the Da Xue, or in English, the Good Learning. Uh, it's written by one of the students of Confucius, uh, one of the students of student of Confucius, and it's uh, regarded as one of the most important texts uh, in Chinese philosophies. Um, but it's kind of funny story to tell in the, in the very beginning why did I actually bought this book. And actually, I bought this book now in 2010, not because I was really interested in the doctrines of philosophy inside, but because I was wanting to back up my argument with my dad. Because you know, Asian parents, so always terrible, especially to a young like. Like any other Asian parents, uh, my father-in-law, he loves to call Confucius uh, when he is talking to me. So he often says that. Uh, the Asian sage Confucius said, uh, you should be a Josiah son. Uh, Confucius said, you should obey your father. Uh, Confucius said, you should be gentle and shouldn't argue with me. And Confucius said, you shouldn't have a girlfriend in high school. I was like, you know, that really made me interested. So what did I actually all want to really say? And why is Confucius always making those stupid remarks and being annoying all the time? And what's wrong with that guy? So actually, uh, I started uh, reading the, that, that book. And which turned out to be quite interesting. Uh, after a few days learning, I actually become fascinated by the ideas and doctrines in the book. 
So I'm surprised that most of my problems are actually in life are actually in the concern of Confucian philosophy. And I, th and I thought I finally found a cure to my own problems and my depression. So item after item and book after book, I after a few years, like two years of progressive uh, reading, I finished all the books that are available, uh, which are published before Christ uh, in ancient Chinese philosophy. And I think uh, the saying of those long dead people that last throughout the ages for good reason. And now I'm presenting to you my discoveries, which categorize in three. So the first one is your mentality and motivation. And if you know Chinese, uh, you will have a very different understanding of the English translation of this word. But actually, I think this, this is better understood. So in Chinese philosophy, uh, the most important thing about it is your mentality. So it's even more important than method, than your teacher, than anything else. So before you do something, you have to first ask yourself, uh, what's your motivation? So I started to ponder long and deeply on my own problem. So why did I at first study physics? And why did it actually lead to my failure? And then I came out that, uh, as I recalled, uh, the reasons was that I wanted to be praised. I want to be feel like I'm cool and clever than other people. I'm smart, smart than other people. And I was just doing nothing more than aiming at collecting titles, which is doomed by default. And I was trying to define who I am by some external things, like a good physicist, this title, or a good grade, or somebody who actually can capable of uh, taking eight or nine courses in a semester. So at some point in your life, have you actually think about this? Uh, we become somehow so busy, uh, mind your secular stuff, of course, and drudgeries in your daily life, that we somehow forget or, or think about, to think about our causes and the reasons why we're doing this, and all our vocations. So why do you choose this major? And is this your own will or your parents' will? Or is this society's expression on you? Those are the problems that are actually in concern. So actually, if you haven't think about this, it's not your fault, you know? Nowadays, all over the world, we see that kind of motivational videos and all of the philosophy about success, are trying, people trying to sell uh, their kind of lessons about how to be successful people. And actually, this kind of hype of entrepreneurship is also harmful and driving everyone insane. And you probably heard of some. So they said uh, you should actualize your dream and your value as early as possible in your life. You should start up a business, and you should actually uh, just trying to make yourself feel better by earning more money and by acting independently on yourself. And, and they said you'll be next big job. You should just drop out of school. Do you think it's real? <laughs> so we see all of the internet that they said you can do it. So follow your heart or something, which I think is pure nonsense. And it's particularly funny that we're letting people who are actually hardly have time to think about it, their lives, say actors, businessmen, sportsmen, politicians, whoever is rich and famous, to teach us how to live our lives. And what do these opportunists actually know about life? And one, of the, one of the worst traits of capitalism is that it's trying to make everything, make every people believe that everything is uh, going to be a business. So no, my answer is no. The genius works in arts and real sciences, so say physics, biology, and math, are hardly profitable. And without them, our civilization could never, uh, would never actually go anywhere. So in a sense, their lessons about success is nothing more than just filling up the barbarian needs of human beings about money and sex. Well, they don't talk directly about money and sex, right? So nobody's gonna concede that he or her life is actually basically uh, uh, about money and sex. But they talk in a fancy way. People are starting to buy their Philistine philosophies if they're trying to turn uh, their money and sex into career and family. So this simplistic uh, advertisement of a supposedly applicable paradigm for so-called successful life is misleading as well as harmful to the human psyche. And to some extent, I think it's e even threatening our civilization in the sense that it tries to gauge your personal values on a universal scale and in an attempt to obliterate the precious uh, diversity of our human race. 
the, the Homo sapiens. And we know well from evolutionism that a species which is surely going to fail in a tragedy if it goes without diversity, right? So we're all willing with these lessons in philosophy. And I can tell you very sure that the fashion things are hardly good, good for you. And noisy places are never good places. I stopped reading that newspaper which says somebody just got rich by chance and stopped listening to motivational speeches. And actually our misgivings about life is actually rooted in the very beginning that we tie our personal values uh, to the popular opinions of others. So on the one we are vulnerable, it's, but in the very beginning it's about heart. Uh, inner satisfaction can only be achieved uh, when we have a good cause. So this is what Confucius is about. So in order to, to achieve something, you have to first kind of straighten up your mind. You have to first uh, empty uh, your, 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 your brain. You have to think, think about nothing. If you suffer from uh, sorrow or distress, or is feeling very uh, inspirational by something which is uh, harmful, it's not actually going anywhere. And actually, uh, when the mind is not present, we look and we do not see. When we hear and we do not understand. When we eat and we do not know the taste of what to eat. So most of the people, they actually don't think about this. They start doing, they start falling their heart before they even understand what their heart is really for. So actually it's about you, it's in your DNA, not in the books, not in the motivational speech, and it's you gotta find it by yourself. And life is about fitting your career plans into a human nature, instead of fitting your nature into a career plans. And human nature comes before everything. And the second aspect is learning and practicing. So it reminds me of one of the cliches in the famous novel, The Tale of the Sea, written by Charles Dickens. Uh, it was the best of times, the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness. And it's a sor such a sarcasm that we, born in the miraculous the age of explosion of knowledge and information, are in fact collectively called the dumbest generation. So why? And what can we do about this? And Confucius' answer is to learn something. And Confucius <laughs> said that I'm not just a genius, I have to learn all the kind of things written by Asian people in order to come out of this. And if you don't understand Chinese, there's a equivalent translation, which is not translation, it's written by another thinker, uh, Otto Schopenhauer, a German philosopher, which has the very same thing. So this is Confucius' uh, advice on how to actually learn about something. So the first important thing is to learn privacity and extensively. So, uh, ever since the Industrial Revolution, uh, I mean, having the vast profession as some kind of motive uh, in, uh, in, our, in people's ideas, and actually they're delimiting themselves, and they become so motive that actually people will hardly think about doing anything that is, goes beyond their majors. So, mind your own business, they said, and science is for the nerd, they said, and philosophy is for the scholastic philosophers, and history is for the historians, which is wrong. And the real question is, are you interested? If you, if you really want to know what's going on in there, uh, in a black hole or in the universe, a far distant corner of the universe, you should just grab a and start learning. Why not? They're not if you shouldn't have to actually uh, outsource of, uh, or learning the important this process to some other people, like the expert or something. And we're more and more become like factory workers, whose whole life is spent in making one particular kind of school. And we call these people expert which I think is stupid. <laughs> for, I mean, for true understanding of nature and the world around us, it's necessary for men to take very large views, which is to learn extensively. And he, however, if he who uh, wished to be a complete philosopher or thinker or anybody who actually cares about something, must gather into his head the remotest end of human knowledge. For where else could they actually come together? And the second advice here is to increase value careful with reflection on it. So I call it to learn systematically and critically. You may say, yes, I do a lot of knowledge. I spend considerable time uh, in my life trying to know these interesting facts and stuff. So for example, I know that polar bears are left-handed and starfish don't have a brain. And I don't want to tell you that uh, these are some kind of junior knowledge. And these are actually, you're not 
in loving the knowledge. You just this is just kind of voyeurism. You kind of love that interesting fact, which are actually just trying to amuse people, not to make people learn. So if you're only willing to develop, develop uh, devote your spare time into learning, then you're not actually a philosopher. You're just uh, another fine boy on the internet. So when people are trying to achieve something in my life, uh, in their life, I think the first thing, uh, the important thing to follow is trying to know that he learned this. It's not because this is cool or he can show off to some other people. It's because it is important or it's, it is very interesting. And the third uh, doctrine he says here is that uh, have prejudice, discrimination, and earnest practice of it. And I think that actually the modern uh, education is trying to detach this kind of pr uh, application process from the learning process. So they taught us to learn the things, learn the dogmas, theorems in the textbook, and try to apply it to the problem. Then you're done, A plus, good, perfect. But actually it's not. We should actually apply our knowledge into concrete problems. If you cannot find a concrete problem, just ask professor and think about it to so have a discussion. So why this actually, to me, sounds useful? Uh, why this sounds to you like uh, useless? So these are the problems that actually are in concern with, with us. And the third aspect, which is the last aspect, I think, is uh, having willpower and self-discipline. So you have to do like as if you're working over an empire. If you have ever saw, if you have ever experienced this stage in your life, you know that infants have nothing to lose. They have, they have nothing in their mind. All the thing is just to do what they're doing now and trying to think about what they're going to do in the future. So I think this mindset is very important. So you have to take the courage to start the new life uh, from the very beginning uh, when, when a new day starts. So it's like just trying to make that day the new day and forget about, and forget about your past. So, uh, as a conclusion, uh, Confucius said, a knowledgeable person is free from perplexity, and a person with virtuous motivation is free from anxiety, and a courageous person is free from fear, is free from fears. And actually, I, as an uh, independent thinker, as a man of science, uh, as a self-proclaimed philosopher, here a way for era of true renaissance, which incorporate the power of Chinese Asian philosophy into the world civilization. Okay, thank you very much.